morning pottery peeps so i think this is more like a day in the life probably not all day <laughs> but i'm throwing mugs today for a christmas order um that i think is just a brilliant idea um i'm also listening to an audiobook and since love recommending books jd kirk uh dead man walking this is like book 18. uh narrator is angus king phenomenal love him um anyway love jd kirk too really funny uh crime novels kind of gritty there's some language <laughs> set in scotland um i just i put it on when i'm out here and i bust up laughing as i'm throwing and i'm whisked away to the highlands of scotland so can't get much better than that so what i'm doing today um Lynn uh, wanted these mugs for her family and for the kids in her family and this is the style that she wants not I'm not I'm just going to do my standard handle it's not going to be this mug but this shape of mug so that's what I'm going to throw today uh, I got to throw quite a few of them so I thought I would show you um, how I throw these guys I've got a pound and two ounces of clay so what 18 ounces of clay um don't know what that is in grams sorry i'm lucky enough to do um american math <laughs> or, or what is it is it it's not just americans that do pounds and ounces is it oh well. anyway see i'm such a squirrel tangent anyway add showing up there now i do have when you're throwing multiples, I do have one of these gauges. <laughs> I hardly ever use it. It just collects clay from sitting down here. Um, I go old school with a ruler and calipers. So what I'll do is I'll measure the height of the first mug I throw, and then I'll measure the width of the mouth. And then I will <laughs> usually throw a couple and measure, and then I just keep throwing, and they invariably muscle memory kicks in and they they turn out close enough I mean these are all hand thrown they're all gonna be a little bit different I don't um, stress or I'm not a perfectionist and because I like that each mug has a little bit of its own personality because it is individually made it's not um, cast thrown or it's not made by a machine. It's made by a person and sometimes a crazy one. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and lower you down and uh, show you how I do this. And we're racing the sun because pretty soon I'm going to have too many shadows and you won't be able to see my wheel. So let me go ahead and I'm hoping. Actually, I'm going to hold on a second while I adjust the view. Okay, so this is Lockerbie kick wheel. It has one speed, which is fast, and then to control the speed, that comes down to me kicking. So when I center, I just the pedal just goes to the floor and it goes fast. And then I let off the, the pedal to slow it down. Okay, so this is straight out of the bag. I didn't wedge it. When I don't wedge the clay, I'm basically wedging it by coning up and down. Getting those the clay used to the idea of what I want it to do. So and this is the new B mix that I've been having issues with, so now at this point, you could check your depth with a needle tool. The more you get to throwing, you kind of get an idea of where your floor is based on your fingers out here. Your fingers talk to each other. I'm just compressing from the inside or the outside to the inside. 
I smooth that off and then I'm going to give these guys a little swirl. I do that now and then I soften that swirl so that I, um, I can't get my hand in there to do the swirl later. Now I need to get some height on these before I push them out. So that's what I'm going to be working on now. So I'm going to push in on the outside, stable with my left hand. Kind of bringing that up. I want to bring it up to a cone. Compress the rim so I can keep that straight. I don't want it flaring out on me, so I'll keep... After each pull, I will cone up, or after each pull, I will collar it in so that it knows what I want it to do. These are going to be fairly big mugs. They'll probably hold 16 ounces. And so I don't want them to feel heavy. I'm also mopping up some of the water on the bottom. Then I'm going to collar that in one more time. It also keeps my walls from here. I do want to flare these walls out eventually, but not right now. I want to get that height first. So I'm going to really dig in down here, pull that clay up. Chase the water and just be really consistent in your speed and your pressure to get those walls. So that's probably good. So now, grab my water. Try not to hit my walls and knock it off. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and add my foot. So I throw some water down there at the bottom. And I'm going to come in here and then lift this up while I'm also pushing kind of down with my fingers over here. It's going to give me a little bit of a foot. This will not be trimmed. Then I'm going to come in here, just kind of push in a little bit. Then I'll come in and soften. And I tend to push that foot down just a little bit more. I don't want it actually touching the wheel. I want to be able to get my sponge under it. But I, if I push it up too much with the rib, then I'll push it down a little bit with the sponge. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and push this out that I just pushed in, which gives me a little bit more clay to pull up. I'm going to kind of start shaping it. I'll do most of my shaping with the metal rib. So for height right now, we are probably six inches, six inches right on. I believe that everybody can learn how to throw on the wheel. I believe that it's a skill. Some people will learn faster, pick it up faster, it'll click. And some it'll take a little bit more time. But I believe that if you give it the time, it comes down to practice and giving it the time. If you give it the time, you will learn how to throw. It's time on the wheel that makes a good potter. There is some, you know, some people, like I said, will come to it faster. But it comes down to there has to be time put into the wheel. So I'm just going to collar this in just a touch. Keep looking over there at my other mug. And my I am touching this very, very lightly. My walls are super, super thin. So I'm kind of pushing in. Let me see if I can get on this side of it so you can see. So I'm pushing in with the rib on that corner. And I'm going to come in with that same corner, push in again down there, but push this out a 
a little bit extended here. It's not how I normally do this. You're going to get the idea if I do it on this side. Hopefully the camera will pick it up. And that's basically it. Now this will shrink, of course. So I'm just going to mop my water and the slip on the inside out. So I don't have a lot of slip sitting in there. Round over. This is B mix, so um, it's a very soft clay. The webbing between your fingers is always with you, and you don't have to go hunting for something like plastic or a chamois to or a piece of leather, especially on a clay that doesn't have any grog. I'm gonna push that out just a little bit. I like this little bit of a flare. It makes it more comfortable to drink out of. Um, the liquid flows better into your mouth by having it just a little bit of a flare or more, but rather than straight up and down. And then the last, I should have my sponge on a stick, but I don't. So we'll have to reach in there carefully. So I kind of look it over. And it's somewhat similar in shape. Of course, it's a lot taller. I don't remember how much clay I used on that, so I just picked an ounce. Okay, so I am five and three quarters. And I'm exactly as the other ones I threw last night. Oh, this is taller than the ones I threw last night, but that's okay. So I'll put this one aside, and I threw... I think I threw what I needed last night, but I always like to throw a couple of extras just in case <laughs> in the drying or, oh, I've, well, with this stupid knee of mine, I actually tripped yesterday while carrying a wear board. Don't worry, students, if you're watching this, I only broke my stuff, so, but yeah, Tripped on even ground, nothing in my way, but that's what's wrong with this knee is it just doesn't support me. So I am going to go ahead and listen to my audiobook and we'll probably speed you up, but I'll throw a couple of, I got two more balls here. I'll probably throw those so you can see repetition how I do this. I've got the mugs thrown. I needed seven, I did eight. Usually if I'm doing a custom order, I do at least two possibly, or sometimes four extras. But since this is um, going to be customized with a personalized stamp, I only did one more. But years ago, my husband talked me into buying a 3D printer and he talked me into it by saying he could print out stamps for the studio. <laughs> and uh, so he got his 3D printer and now anytime I need a stamp 
he gets to make it for me. This one says official Hill Clan uh, member and established 1971. I thought this was a brilliant idea. I want to do it for my own family. So she's going to give this to either her grandchildren or her sons and daughter-in-laws. Um, I'm not sure. Um, but we're going to, I'm going, since her last name is Hill and she lives in northern Utah with mountains, um, I have this roller by Debbie Dela Cruz that has mountains on it. So I thought I'd roll that in here too. And then I probably, I didn't like how it looked with the names of the person stamped. Cause we'll put like one person's name is Bryce. So I'll put Bryce on it. So Bryce will get his own mug and he will be um, an official um, Hill Clan member. So, but I think I'm gonna, in the glazing stage, I think I will um, um, carefully <laughs> paint their names. I think the it'll look better because then the stamp will be one thing, um, w one type of font, and then we can do something different that's not pressed in again. All right. Anyway, that's that doesn't make any sense. I didn't express myself, which is normal, in the way that I wanted to. But I think artistically, it'll look better to have their names painted. Anyway, so let me. Um, Go ahead and lower you down and I will show you what I'm doing. So I've got a slab here. I've already, whoop, sorry. I've already rolled the roller in and then uh, figured out that I wasn't filming. So, uh, so I've rolled this in and it does leave me with a line. So I have to clean that up before we go and do the printed stamp. So I'm just cleaning that up. So have that out of the way. And using cornstarch as my release agent, and I've found with the ones that I've already done that I'm getting clay in the A's, in the middle of the middle of the A's and the E's. So I gotta watch that. So then I'm just lining this up. I did put a mark so I knew which was the middle. And then pressing this in. Cool. And I've had to clean out the double checking because I've actually lost had to redo some already because I even went in and asked the hubby, it's like, how long would it take you to print me a new one with a different font? Because this isn't working or it's working, but it's a lot more effort for me to keep cleaning it. And it'd be tomorrow. So that's not going to work. So I'm going to have to clean it. All right, so once I get those where I want them, then I come with my cookie cutter. And I had him print this to the size of this cookie cutter. So if you have somebody with a 3D printer, you can do these type of customized stamps and elevate your what you can offer your customers. Um, this is, I've done, I've done a lot of these for a lodge in Alaska to a security um, mortgage company locally, um, especially for Christmas, you can offer stuff like this and increase your business, make more money. <laughs> so, you know, and it's fun. It's fun to have to do some customized mugs. So I'm having fun with this. So. And then I am going to going to do four more of these and then I'll pick you up and show you how I attach them. Okay, so I have seven of them done. So I, show, I thought I'd show you how I do the, the last one. Um, a lot of you have seen how I do my handles, but I'll show it real quick since um, I've got one here. <laughs> I still got to put a handle. 
Um, when I do medallions on mugs, I um, will do the handle first. So this is how I do the handles. So I've got a pulled handle here. And I'm going to just come in and um, take off the big bit left over. Then I'm going to take this part and I'm going to flatten it out. And kind of just round it off. Just flatten it out. You can also do a design here, like with a cookie cutter if you wanted to, or any type of design really. So I kind of know. Um, okay, I'm going to give you a little bit of a lesson. A lot of people, and I did this, when you first start out, you make your handles too big. So this handle, this is a fairly big mug. It's, um, well, here, let me grab a ruler. I'll tell you how tall it is. It is... Um, about five and three quarters tall. Okay. So this handle right now is helpful if I started with the well, that'll work. Probably about seven and a half inches. But this part of my handle will be so I'm gonna lose an inch right there. And so that's That'll actually work for this type of mug. Now, the bigger the mug, the closer to the body of the mug it should be, in my opinion. Especially big mugs, if the handle is way out here, then holding a full mug, you're going to get a lot of pressure right here because this part of your wrist is going to have to hold that up. But if you've got the handle, Close to the mug, you're, the, it's a center of gravity kind of thing. Holding this mug is going to be a lot more comfortable for the person drinking it. Alright, so I'm just going to, oops, hold on, forgot I added at the last minute a cute design. Where did I put it? Oh, I have this MKM, MKM roller, and since we have mountains on the front, I figured let's have some trees on the handle. So I added that. So I'm going to score the bottom. And then I'm going to, I already know. So if you'll notice with these type of um, bats, they have a tongue right there. So um, a lot of times I will score right there on that tongue or right where the tongue is. Just kind of handy to make sure I'm lined up. So add some slip. I'm going to bring it in here. I'm going to wiggle it on. I'm going to bring it down here, make sure that I am up and down. I'm going to wiggle back. Now, I have this dowel, and I just like to push this, use this dowel to rock it back and forth on that, just to make sure I have a really good connection, and I do it down at the bottom too. Then, take a little bit of, a little bit of the clay that um, I just, Lopped off that handle. I'll make myself a itty bitty coil. I mean like itty bitty. And I'm going to pinch the bottom of it. So now it's an oval coil. Dip that into my water and I'm just going to push that in right there. And then I will smooth it in. Just gives me some more security on that lower part. I've never had a handle crack. Once I started doing this years ago, years and years ago. <laughs> this is my standard handle. 
I like the little um, flip I get up here with the attachment. Sometimes I add a little flip down here if I want to. And then I'll just smooth that into the mug and into the handle so that it looks like it was always there. Then I'm going to come back with my little handy dandy tool. I'm just going to go around this. I'm going to address this again later, but for now, I'll do this. Now, one thing, um, those of you who haven't seen me do this, my, um, it's still attached to the bat. I don't ever take them off the bat until I'm done. Mainly because I don't have to handle the mug. So here is our medallion. So I am going to score the living daylights out of it. I'm going to get it wet too. It's really thin, so it won't take long to moisten up. I mean, it's not leather harder by any means, but it's definitely a lot drier. I mean, I did these like at noon and it's now eight o'clock. <laughs> so it gets away from you sometimes. Granted, I've done a lot of other things in between. These guys were under wraps. So add some slip. I really slip these guys up. I really score and slip. So it's fairly wet. Now, I like the medallions so that when you lift the mug, the medallion's right here. Oh, hold on a second. I got a dog at the door. <laughs> Bye. So, I need to actually look at it though in order to do this. I'm just going to, I'm not worried about it being centered. I just want to hit it on four points so that I know where I need to score this. I've got enough slip on the medallion. I don't need to add any more slip. Okay, so now I'm going to put that on there. And in order to make it look straight, see why I have them on the bats? They tip it up. Start in the middle. And I work my way out to the side. Because I have had these pop off in the kiln. If there is air underneath them, they will pop off in the kiln. So then I rock it back and forth from the center to the edge. Really roll that edge. Then I do it the same everywhere, all the way around. Making sure that that has got a good connection. And then take the little finger tool, little thumb tool, what do they call this? And I go around. I get that slip that um, came out. I wipe it on my sponge and then I will come back in with the brush and brush any tool marks. Make sure that it's all nice and smooth. And then I will, and I also will come here with my finger to make sure this edge isn't very sharp. Okay. Okay, so now I'll take it off the bat. This is the first time I've handled it since I threw it. Tip it upside down. Another reason why I don't like candles to go up above the rim. They fit better in your cupboard. A lot of people like to put things upside down in their cupboard or if they're um, hand washing them and they put them to dry. A little old school. <laughs> uh, 
my favorite mugs. I mean, I will put them in the dishwasher. But the dishwasher sometimes, I've had handles break because they get knocked around. Because it's pretty powerful, all the stuff going on in the dishwasher. So now that it's upside down, again, I'm not, I'm not um, holding it. Hold on a second, I got a visitor. They were actually looking for my dog. <laughs> so now that it's upside down, and if you'll notice, I haven't, I'm not handling it. I will clean up anything that I couldn't see when it was the other direction. So I'll make sure I get this. Oh, hold on. My dog likes to eat clay. <laughs> I just had to make sure he wasn't eating clay. Have it, do you guys have a dog that'll eat clay? I've never seen it. He's always done that. He'll go for my... Um, Reclaim bucket with the dried bits of clay and pick out a piece of clay and eat it. I'm not worried about it on the bee mix, but he did it once on the black clay that's full of who knows what to make it black. I actually had to call my clay supplier and my vet because I didn't know how much he'd ate. And I knew that, that there's a lot of ma magnesium um, in there. And so I was quite worried. But that was probably about six years ago. <laughs> so he's he's ten, ten and a half. A little cocker spaniel, he's so stinking cute. All right. So um, I've already did I already yep I already cleaned that off. Double check the bottom of the handle, making sure that's good. So this is the last time I'm going to touch this mug until I put it in the kiln. Well, I will touch it when it's bone dry. I'll add my maker stamp. Yeah, when it's bone dry, right before it goes in for a bisque kiln, I will check it one more time to see if there's any goobers or anything I missed that can be knocked off. But I pretty much want it done right at this point. So the last thing I do, so put that in there. If you'll notice, it didn't move. And when you're putting these medallions on, especially if, because um, you got to hit it just right. If you hit it too wet, it's gonna um, make your your mug is gonna go oval. Um, if you hit it too dry, this is gonna crack. So it's like with pottery, anything with pottery, it's a timing issue. But if you'll notice, when I put that in here. Um, it hadn't moved. I mean, it's perfectly just like when I threw it. I did not have to adjust it. I will always check that. Um, but by leaving them on the bats and handling them this way, I don't have a lot of issues with them warping. Anyway, I hope you like this one. Um, it is a great tool to have, um, a great thing you can offer your customers. I think for family, I've never even thought about it for family. So thank you, Lynn. <laughs> You're brilliant. She's just the most amazing woman. I just absolutely love her. Um, but yeah, this is great to offer for families. I do it a lot for companies, but never even thought about um, families. So I hope this helps. I hope you can get money and we'll see you in the next video. One last thing. I... <laughs> Even though um, we're not near as hot as we were, I still, in Utah, we still get 75 degrees during the day. Um, we get freezing at night, 75 during the day, and sorry, you are rocking. i got to figure out a way to, this is just really sensitive. I will cover these, and I'll probably cover them for a couple of days. A lot of times I will keep them covered during the day and unwrap them at night. <laughs> and then, um, yeah. I'll cover them for a couple of days, check on them, and then probably um, with our weather, I probably will be able to bisfire them next week. That's the plan since I got three weeks left. <laughs> I have no idea when this will upload though. Hopefully, who knows? Hopefully everything went all right. But I do have the most amazing sunset to show you. Sometimes you just have to look up. So that will be following this. Ooh.